Hello, students. I am going to go ahead and start a tutorial. Um, if you happen to be available, go ahead and um, and you can sign in to Pronto right now and watch. Otherwise, I'm just going to record it. The video will be available and um, you can look at it anytime that you wish. So I'm going to start the tutorial for chapter two. Um, let me go ahead and I'll go to the modules. Um, actually, first I need to share my screen. <laughs> so hold on here. Um, I'm going to share. Uh, let's see if I want to just share one window. All right. Let's just go ahead and share my whole screen. Not the best way to do it, but we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. So here I am sharing my screen. Um, here's our home page. Let me go ahead and uh, and click on the modules. And here we are in uh, week two. So I'm going to go ahead and click on, I'm sorry, week two. You want to go into week three, right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to week three. And I'm going to click on chapter two tutorials. Her point is. Mm -hmm. And it's going to apparently take a little while. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Um, it says if you haven't read chapter two before um, starting this, um, you're going to need to have read it. So make sure at least kind of skimmed over and went over it. The cool thing is if you click on here, you can actually get to chapter two and you can read it from there. Okay. All right. So it says minority student clubs, segregation or integration by Gabriela Moro. Uh, minority representation on U.S. college campuses has increased significantly in recent years, and many schools have made it a priority to increase diversity on their campuses in order to prepare students for a culturally diverse U.S. De democratic society, Hurtado and Ruiz, um, pages three through four. Um, to complement this increase, many schools have implemented minority student clubs to provide safe and comfortable environments where minority students can thrive academically and socially with peers from similar backgrounds. However, do these minority groups amplify students' tendency to react only with those who are similar to themselves? Put it another way, do these groups inhibit students from engaging in diverse relationships? So we know that this is going to be what the paper is going to be about, right? Many view such programs to be positive and integral to um, minority students' college experience. Some, however, feel that these clubs are not productive for promoting cross-cultural interaction. While, while minority clubs have proven to be beneficial to minority students, in some cases, particularly on campuses that are not very diverse, my research suggests that colleges would enrich the educational experience for all students by introducing multicultural clubs in, as well. So right here, she says, my research. So we get kind of the idea that that's like her I say, right, or um, as compared to what the, the they say is say. Um, to frame my discussion, I will use an article from College Student Journal that dis this distinguishes between two types of groups, one who believes minority clubs are essential for helping minority students stay connected with their cultures, and another who believes these clubs isolate minorities and work against diverse interaction among students. So that they're gonna, she's going to juxtapose or put side by side these two papers and these two ideas, which is what you're going to do in your second paper. So you might want to make a note of that. Um, to pursue the question of whether or not such groups segregate minorities from the rest of the student body and even encourage cultural awareness, I will use perspectives from minority students to show that these programs are especially helpful for first year students. So she's going to actually say what she is going to do, which is show that this is useful to first year students. I will also use another student testimonial to show that when taken too far, minority groups can lead to self-segregation and defy what most universities claim to be their diversity goals. Findings from research will contribute to a better understanding of the role minority clubs play on college campuses and offer a complete answer to my question about the importance of minority programs. So she's gonna look at all of the evidence and then answer the question, um, like, are these helpful or are these not helpful? Um, before I go further, I would like to differentiate among three kinds of diversity that Gurren et al. identifies in their article, diversity and higher education, theory and impact on educational outcomes. 
The first type is structural diversity. So we know we have this thing that we're going to actually define here. And I'm sure that it's probably going to come up again in my life sometime. So I'm going to make sure I put that in there. I know what structural diversity is, but in case you don't. Um, the existence of, oh, sorry, structural diversity, the numerical representation of diverse racial and ethnic groups. The existence of structural diversity alone does not assure that students will develop valuable intergroup relationships. The next is classroom diversity. Um, the second type involves gaining content knowledge or a better understanding about diverse peers and their backgrounds by doing so in the classroom. So let's go ahead and say that's content diversity, right? Um, the third type of diversity, informal interaction diversity. So here's our third type, informal in interaction diversity, right? Um, refers to both the frequency and the quality of intergroup interaction as keys to meaningful diversity experiences in college. So students often encounter this kind of diversity in social settings outside the classroom, says Gurin. Um, informal interaction diversity is the focus of my research since it is the concept that leads colleges to establish so social events and organizations that allow all students to experience and, and appreciate the variety of cultures presented in a student body. In a study published in Jur College Student Journal, um, three administrators at Pennsylvania State University explored how biracial students interact with others on a college campus. The authors concluded that views of minority clubs and related programs, which the authors call race-oriented student services, so R-O-S-S, race-oriented student services, tend to fall into two groups. Okay, so there's going to be two groups of Ross here. Okay, um, although... And actually, we don't know that this is hers, so let's go ahead and put in a different color. Um, this is sort of a they say. Although some argue that race-oriented student services or Ross, um, are de divisive and damage white minority relations, Stern and Gator, others support that these services um, as providing su other support these services as providing a safe place and meeting. Um, the needs of minority students to develop a sense of racial pride, community, and the important or and importance. So let's go ahead. And this seems to be uh, they say I will start by examining the point of view of those who associate minority clubs with positive outcomes. Okay, so she, this is a they say she's going to look at the other side. Um, a study by Samuel D. Museus in the, the Journal of College Student Development found that minority student programs help students stay, stay connected with their culture in college and ease the first year minority students transition into the college environment. The study also shows that ethnic student organizations help students adjust and find their place at, the, at universities that have a predominantly white student body. Museus concluded that universities should stress the importance of racial and ethnic groups and develop more opportunities for minority students to make connections with them. This way, students can find support from their minority peers as they work together to face academic and social challenges. Museus' findings suggest that minority student groups are essential to allowing these students to preserve and foster connections to their own cultures. Okay, so that's what Museus, that's what he says, right? So here's another they say. In another study, Hall et al. evaluated how minority and non-minority students differed in their inclinations to take part in diversity activities and communicate with racially and ethnically diverse peers at a predominantly white university. These scholars concluded that engagement with diverse peers is, a learn, is learned, right? So you have to learn how to do that. Students who engaged with diverse students before going to college were more likely to interact with diverse peers by the end of their sophomore year. Minority students were more predisposed than their white peers to interact with diverse peers during their freshman year. Um, these findings indicate that minority student clubs can be helpful for first year minority students. Okay, so we know that it, they, this also findings say that it can be helpful and we know that he evaluated, right, um, activities, right? Um, 
uh, who have not previously engaged with other minority students, especially if the university has predominantly white student body. Professors and scholars are not the only ones who strongly support minority clubs. For example, three students at Harvard College, Andrea Delgado, Denzel, no last name given, and Kim Fafo, Fafowara, uh, I'm probably saying the wrong, I'm saying it's, Faf, it's probably Fafowara, uh, give the, pay, the perspective on student life and multicultural identity on a campus to incoming students via YouTube. The students explain how minority programs on campus have helped them adjust to a new college environment as first year students. As Delgado put it, I thought cultural clubs were something I maybe didn't need, but come November, I miss speaking Spanish and I missed having tacos and, another, and other things like that. That's the reason why I started attending meetings more regularly. Latinas Unidas has been a great intersection of my cultural background and my political views. The experiences these minority students shared support the scholarly evidence that minority clubs help incoming students transition into a new and often intimidating um, intimidating environment. Okay, so here, we're gonna put this as a they say, even though she's agreeing, it seems like she's agreeing with them. Um, actually, we could even put a note there. But, um, while the benefits of these clubs are quite evident, Several problems can also arise from them. The most widely recognized is self-segregation. Okay, so she's going to say that this could possibly be a problem, right? And we're going to put this in green just because we haven't really talked about that, that yet. Self-segregation tendencies are not ex exclusive to minority students. College students in general tend to self-segregate as they enter an unfamiliar environment. As a study by Martin et al. finds, today the student college, the student, sorry, the student body of our leading colleges and universities are more diverse than ever. However, um, studies as well, oh, sorry, yeah, studies, <laughs> however, college students are increasingly self-segregated by race and ethnicity, Martin says. Um, several studies as well as interviews with students suggest that minority clubs exacerbate students' inclination to self-segregate. Self and as students become comfortable with their minority peers, they may not, they may not, no longer desire or feel the need to branch out of their comfort zone. Okay, so here is the other, here's what they say, that maybe those clubs are going to actually cause them to self-segregate. Another study, Julie J. Park, um, a professor at the University of Maryland, examined the, inter examined the relationship between participation in college student organizations and the development of interracial friendships. Um, Park suggests that if a student spends the majority of time in such groups, Greek, ethnic, or religious st student organizations, participation may affect student involvement in the broader diversity of the institution. In other words, if minority students form all of their social and academic ties with their minority group, the desired cultural exchange among the student body could suffer. Okay, so we want to say that we want that it's possible that they're... Um, that we could stop more, stop uh, mixing, that there could be uh, more self-segregation, right? Um, so what can be done? Now we know that she's asking this question probably here, right? Let's go ahead and put it in the, the they say, or I say, just in case. Um, in the Penn State study mentioned earlier, in which data were collected by an online survey, participants were asked to respond to an open-ended question about what they think universities should do to create a more inviting environment for biracial students. Um, on one hand, multiple students responded with opinions opposing the formation of both biracial and multicultural clubs. I feel instead of having biracial and multiracial clubs at the college, the college should have a di diversity clubs and just allow everyone to get together. All these separate categorizing of clubs, isn't that just separate, isn't that just separation of groups? Having a ton of clubs that are for specific races is counterproductive. It creates segregation and lacks lack of com communication across cultures, says Ingram. On the other hand, right? So here's the opposing viewpoint again. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick that in pink here. Um, students offer suggestions for the formation of multicultural activities. Encourage more racial integration to show students student races are so different from each other, um, and lessen and to lessen st stereotypes. Um, hold cultural events that allow students to um, allow. Oh, sorry. 
whole culture and substance of different races to express and share their heritage. Ingram et al. concluded that while biracial and multicultural student organizations are helpful in establishing an inviting college environment for my, minority students, creating a truly inclusive environment requires additional efforts. These include multicultural awareness training for faculty, staff, and students, and incorporation of multicultural issues into the curriculum, says white guests, or et cetera. Um, in addition to the creation of biracial multiracial clubs and organizations, the students in this study want to increase awareness of the mixed heritage population among others at on college campuses. Two very different opinions reported in this study point to the challenges minority students programs can create, but also suggest ways to resolve these challenges. Now that the evidence from both research studies and, studies and student perspectives confirm that these clubs, while beneficial to minority students' experiences, can inhibit cultural immersion, I will continue with my original argument that the entire student body would benefit if campuses also implemented multicultural advocacy clubs rather than just selective minority clubs. Gurren et al., the researcher who identified the three types of diversity in higher education, contend that even with the, pr the presence of diverse racial and ethnic groups um, and regular communication among students, formally and informally, a great push from educators is needed. So let's go ahead and she says, I will continue my original argument. Yeah, let's go ahead and put that as her, her they say, right? Um, in order to foster citizenship for diverse um, democracy, educators must intentionally structure opportunities for students to leave the comfort of their homogenous peer groups and build relationships across racially and ethnically diverse student communities on campus. This suggestion implies that participation from students and faculty is needed to foster cultural immersion in higher education. Another way to improve cross-cultural exchange is by developing a diverse curriculum. So here's another diverse curriculum. Uh, this is sort of a they say, right? What did I put they say color? Yeah, it was some blue. Um, so an art article on multicultural curriculum in higher education by Alma Clayton Pedersen and Karen McTeague Musli or Musli. Um, in the Encyclopedia of Education reviewed the ways in which universities have incorporated diversity studies into their core curriculum over the last several decades. They found that the numbers of courses that seek to prepare students for a democratic society rich in diversity have increased. However, they recommended that institutions need to take a more holistic approach to their academic curricula in order to pursue higher education programs that prepare students to face complex and demanding questions and to use their no new knowledge intercultural capacity capacities to address real world problems. My research supports that a more holistic approach to the importance of diversity studies in college curriculum, as well as a multicultural advocacy clubs are necessary in order to prepare all students, not just minority students for the diverse world and society ahead. So here is her idea right here that I say. Thus, even though minority student groups can lead to self-segregation among students and result in less cross-cultural interaction, their benefits to minority students suggest that a balance needs to be found providing support for minorities and avoiding segregation of these groups from the rest of the student body. So she's saying, yes, I know this can cause self-segregation, but we've got to find a way to balance those two things. Besides sponsoring minority student programs, colleges and universities can implement multicultural events and student programs, colleges and universities, oh sorry, <laughs> besides sponsoring minority student programs, colleges and universities can implement multicultural events and activities for students to participate in, especially during the freshman year. An initiative like this would enhance the diversity interaction that occur on campus, promoting cultural immersion and garnering support for minority student clubs. Beyond the reach of this evaluation, further research should be conducted specifically on the types of cultural events that are most effective in promoting cultural awareness and meaningful diversity interactions among the student body. By examining different multicultural organizations from both public and private institutions and comparing student experiences and participation in those programs, researchers can suggest an ideal multicultural program to provide an optimal student experience. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and continue, right? 
um, answer the questions to show that you recognize how Moro uses summaries to bring in what others have said on the topic of minority student clubs on U.S. college campuses. All right, so does Moro describe a larger conversation that she responds to with her argument? In other words, does Moro include a they say? Absolutely, right? Moro includes a they say, but um, only as widely accepted beliefs or yes, Moro includes what several others say um, are saying on the topic and presents widely accepted beliefs as well. Yes, absolutely, right? A lot of them, <laughs> of course. Um, uh, Moro uses summaries to present the results of her research and explain her own point of view. What is Moro's stance on minority clubs as a means for increasing diversity on campus and preparing students for a culturally diverse democra dem democratic society? Um, in minority clubs segregation or integration, Moro is undecided, agrees, or disagrees. Um, is undecided, Moro is undecided, about whether minority clubs are the best and only means for promoting diversity on campus. So, no? I'm sorry, clubs. Well, she disagrees, actually, sorry. She disagrees, <laughs> sorry about that. As you can see, this is a, an art and not a science. I'm gonna sometimes make mistakes on these as well. Um, but, you can see why I might say it's undecided because she does go back and forth, but the way that they phrase that, I can see that. Um, okay, a good summary points in two directions at once. Read the following summaries of a source that Mora uses in her research. How do biracial students interact with others on the college campus by Ingram et al? Which summary includes details that best fit Moro's agenda and help strengthen her argument? Okay, so let's go ahead. Whew, these are long, but we'll see. Um, in the Penn State study participants, um, mono and biracial students on the Penn State campus were interviewed for suggestions about how to make biracial students feel more welcome on campus. The students' recommendations varied. Suggestions include an increase in support services for these students and finding ways to increase these students' visibility on campus. Some students also noted that not all biracial students had the same attitude about their ethnicity. Others suggested offering more classes on diversity and race relations. And not sure that that's going to fit her agenda that much, right? Um, and Penn State study you mentioned earlier, in one data, um, or in which data were collected by an online survey, participants were asked to respond to an open-ended question about what they think universities should do to create more inviting environment for biracial students. On one hand, multi multiple students responded with opinions opposing the formation of both biracial and multiracial clubs. I feel instead of having biracial and multiracial clubs, the colleges should have diversity clubs and should allow everyone to get together. All these separate categorizing clubs, isn't that, isn't that just separation of groups? Okay, so that sort of fits her, her thing, her, her um, agenda. So let's go ahead and see this last one. In a study conducted at Penn State, several recommendations were made. First, colleges and universities should take steps to provide supportive services for bi or multiracial students. Second, it must be recognized that not all biracial students have the same attitudes and opinions about their mixed race heritage. Third, universities need to work to increase awareness and understanding of the biracial population on campus, right? This really does not meet it. So um, this particular one, it fits her agenda because it does talk about clubs, right? All right, let's go down. Um, imagine you're writing an essay arguing that despite the fact that minority clubs can cause self-segregation, such clubs are still important for the success of minority students, and you're including a summary of Moro's piece. Which of the following summaries would be appropriate to include in your text? All right, so we know that we're going to be talking about um, that those clubs are still important, even though there could be self-segregation. Um, so here is the first one in her article, Minority Student Club Segregation or Integration, Gabriela Moro does, or focuses on the goal of colleges and universities to increase diversity and achieve a positive environment where students of all races, ethnic, ethnicities can survive, um, survive, can thrive. Um, she points out that in some ways, minority clubs encourage students to self-segregate as they find comfort in their homogenous peer groups. This may be true, but my, but but minority student clubs provide too many benefits to be discarded for the sake of integration or sake of integration and diversity. Eh, not the best. Maybe. 
Um, in her article, Gabriela Moro examines the effect of student minority clubs on campus diversity and integration. First, she says that although there are benefits to minority clubs, they can cause self-segregation. She then explains that there are several theories about how to avoid self-segregation. Some think that less attention should be paid to race, but others think that cultural, diver cultural differences among race should be highlighted and celebrated. Moro also explains that a diverse cult curriculum can improve cross-cultural exchange. Um, not really, because you're talking about how clubs, right? So we're looking for can cause self-segregation, um, but such clubs are still important, right? It looks like number one's looking a little bit better. And minority student clubs, self or segregation or integration, um, Gabriela Moro makes the claim that minority student clubs cause self-segregation. But then she says that the minority clubs do have benefits for minority students. What is she saying? That self-segregation is good for minority students? I disagree. I'm going to go with this one. Let's see. All right. I like that one. Um, I am going to say that this one is not so good. It's ineffective. Right. Um, I am going to, let me see. In minority, do we think this is a good one? I don't think this is particularly effective for her point of view, right? Um, by then, minority clubs do, um, do have a benefit for minority students. Um, I'm video tuning. All right, hold on here. Let me pause the recording. Stop first.